that doesn't answer your question. I don't know what does. Carvel on the beat. <laughs> Another episode of the Perra Who Stole Christmas. For today's video, I haven't done like a cheese man mukbang video and I don't know how long. Cause I'll be trying to get the cheese man somewhere else, but if it's not coming from my mouth, it's not through. But I said, I have not done a mukbang with y'all in forever. And I was gonna make some spicy noodles cause I know y'all love these. But yeah, I was gonna get straight into like filming the little mukbang Q&A. But I was like, let me just do like a little cooking slash mukbang video, a little two for one combo. In case none of y'all have made these before and you wanna try them, or if you just forgot the old recipe and you wanna do it again, all you're gonna need is your little pack. You can get these. Oh, shit. Don't start right now. No, we're not winning. So you can buy these at Amazon if you don't know where to find them like close to you. But I just use one pack of these and then I like to make two eggs. That's your preference, but I like two. Because who doesn't like two eggs? And then some green onions and look stupid. That's even if, oh shit. Even if y'all don't like green onions, try it please. I fucking hate onions. But these change the game, especially in these. So bomb. And then I use some mozzarella cheese. That's literally all you need and it tastes so right now I'm putting my little pan to boil. I'm pretty sure that should be good. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna open my noodle doo. Mm. And you're just gonna put it in there. I see the facilito. Just gonna chotodo. Okay, now we're just gonna let that chill and calm down for a few minutes. It's still on high on boil, pa que se aguade. Y'all know how to make fucking soba maruchan, it's the same thing. All right, once your noodles are all aguados and shit, take it to your sink, and you're gonna take out some water. Not all of it, but the majority of it. Maybe like 90, 95% of the water, but keep some in there. Oh shit, just dropped like 90% of the noodles. Oh. All right, once you accidentally flush half of the noodles down the drain, <sighs> you're gonna put the little paquete of chili that comes with the noodles. Mira, cada quien a su gusto, but I like to put the whole shebang pack in there because it's bomb. Pero si está bien pinche spicy, so if it's your first time, maybe just do half of it and don't do the full pack because when yo empecé a comerme estos, I definitely was not doing the full pack because it was really spicy for me, but I got used to it. Now you're just gonna mix it all together so that you get all of the salsa and they're all nice and freaking yummy. So now I'm just gonna grab my little green onions. Y como les dije, you guys, don't be scared of the green onions. I hate any sort of onions, but for some reason, green onions in this freaking hit the spice. And it's low-key made me start kind of like liking onions because I used to freaking hate onions in general And I also love mozzarella cheese in this so echale un buen like put as much cheese as you want Because I swear it tastes so bomb the more cheese Ugh. But as I see the next morning you're gonna be like Ooh, This already looks so bomb I know que ya te sento justo que darme un fucking light on me right now because I know your craving is so bad. Okay, now I'm just gonna make dos huevos estrellados. Y'all already know how to make huevos estrellados, so do that. But I like to do them like over easy, so they're like kind of hard in there. Okay, so here are my spicy noodles, y'all. I don't know if you guys can see how cheesy these are, but I'm so excited to eat them. And over here I have my eggs that are finishing up, so I'm gonna put these in the bowl now. The little bolsita also comes with these little packs. I don't know exactly what they are, but they do taste really good. It just adds like some little semillitas. So I like to add that in there. And voila, aquí está mi platito of spicy noodles with my egg. I only put one egg at a time porque luego se llena mucho el plato. But y'all, I'm so excited to eat it <laughs> and answer y'all's spicy questions. All right, let's go. All right, stupidas, so we are in my living room, and in case you're wondering why I'm sitting on the floor and not on my couch, it's because this is where I usually sit when I'm watching TV, because I don't like eating on my couch because it's all white, as y'all can see. I'm nervous, y'all. So I asked you guys to give me topics and ask me some questions on my Instagram, and y'all asked me some good-ass questions, which is why I'm a little nervous. But before we start, 
Let's take a bite. Oh my god. And I don't need you to hear any of you stupid ass complaining about the way that I eat, that I'm not chewing it, that I'm just swallowing it. I don't care. Okay, let's start off with this one. It says, what do you see yourself doing in five years from now? Those are always hard. I see myself in a stable relationship. I have a fear of like getting older because I'm 24, you guys, but I still feel really young sometimes. Like at heart, I still feel like I'm 19 or 20. But then I see a lot of things that I've accomplished and done at my age. And then I also feel a lot more mature than people my age. Not just with like what I'm doing, but I mean like mentally. But you guys also know like I'm still a chamaco with the shit I be doing. So yeah, I don't know. I think that's all I got to say because it's making me panic thinking about my future. <laughs> What's the best part of living alone? Um, I love living alone because it's just me time. Since it's about I'm having a chaotic day or it's just been a stressful day or I'm out and I just want to come home. Like, I know this is just for me. Like, I get to do whatever I want in this house and no one can tell me nothing. No one can complain about when I need to clean or when I need to organize something. Like, it's all on my time. Not saying that I'm a fucking cochina, but like... I also don't like being told what to do. Just doing it on my time and when I have time, it's such a a good feeling. Like everything's in my control. And at the same time, but my house is messy as <laughs> It's all my fault. And I like holding myself responsible when something's happened or something doesn't look right or something's messy as fuck. And living alone has really helped me like hold myself accountable for a lot of things, the way things look, if things aren't finished, if things are dirty and messy. Yeah, and also just being more independent. I love that about living alone. Mm. Ooh, this is another future one. <laughs> Damn, y'all really want me to see into my future. So this says, do you see yourself having kids with your significant other, whoever that may be? Um, just in general, I think I've talked about this before. I don't know. Honestly, like where I'm at in life right now, I don't see myself having kids. And I get asked that question a lot, but I'm just scared. It's not that I don't want kids. It's just that it's such a huge responsibility. And I think what gave me a little insight with that is like my dogs. Like, I do see my dogs as, like, my family. Yeah, so that I don't have to take my dogs to school. But it's just, like, I don't have to teach my dogs how to talk, like, how to walk. Like, all those things. It's just, it's a lot of pressure and it scares me. And also just, like, bringing someone into this life and you being responsible for that. And there's so many scary things that happen in this world that, like, not only would I have to be afraid for my life, but afraid for those who I've raised. I don't know, oh my God, you guys are scaring me with these questions. That's just a big responsibility. I don't know, it's just so much, like. So if I'm like being honest as of right now in my life, I don't think I want kids and I don't really see myself with kids either. Like there's a lot of people who already like see themselves with kids and like a family, but like if I see myself with more dogs, that's for sure. But I don't know about kids. Mm -mm. Okay, this is a more fun one. This says, how long has it been since you did it? With like a little smirk. <sighs> when did I post my video about going on a date? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't answer your question. I don't know what it does. Mm, mm. Oh my God, the way we do What's your favorite thing that has happened this year? <gasps> Ooh. My favorite thing that's happened this year, I don't know, I've done a lot of shit this year that I'm very proud of. <clears throat> I'll name a few of my favorite things that have happened this year and then maybe I'll figure out which one's like my top favorite. Um, I love my collaboration with Yoatsi and Dime. Um, that was one of my favorite things just because I've never collabed with Yuatsi like that on something and just be creatively like collaborative in something. So that was definitely a favorite. Um, I also love starting Pretty Not Smart with Yuatsi this year. That was also a favorite. Um, 
my Beauty Creations ex Louis Castro collab is definitely one of my favorites. And then my house. <sighs> I want to say my house and Beauty Creations are right here because I know Beauty Creations was something that I dreamed about since I started like doing makeup and it just seemed unreal. But I think I'm gonna have to go with my house being one of my favorites just because I didn't really see it happening. Like, and when I was younger, if you would have told me I would have owned a house, especially at the age that I'm in at right now, like I don't think I would have believed you. And also because seeing how proud my parents were of me, I think out of everything that I've ever done, that's the one thing that I felt that they were so, so, so proud of me. And that was one of the best feelings in the whole world, just seeing how proud they were of me definitely will forever be in my heart. So I think that's gonna have to take the fave. The flavor, flavor. Oh, it's a good one. This says, how do you deal with all the hate that you receive? <sighs> that's scary. Um, Definitely over the years of me doing YouTube and social media, that has changed quite a bit, I wanna say. I think over the years, as I've been doing social media, um, it's a lot easier for those things to get to me now. Um, I feel like before, especially when I started doing YouTube, I wanna say like 2017, 2018, like y'all know that, Louie. Um, I would also even do like a lot of like responding to hate comments videos. I had a very strong like wall, I wanna say. Like I feel like it was really hard for me to take something like legit, like very, very hard. Back then, I would get a lot of hate based on my appearance or just being gay. It wasn't really anything, like, crazy to me. I was just like, I've heard all of this shit throughout my whole life. Like, I don't care. And very much like that still, I want to say. But I think hate now, um, I've put so much of my life on social media now that a lot of the hate tends to be very personal. And that's where it's really hard because... Um, it does get me to overthink, not be proud of some things that I've done before, like, or sometimes people try to, like, dim my light, or if I'm trying to, you know, do something, like, someone just always has something to say, or if I'm launching a collaboration, or, like, just, there's always somebody trying to dim my light, and it ends up being very personal, especially when it's something that I've worked very, 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 very hard for. I just feel like with everything, somebody has something really negative to say. And it sucks because um, solo yo se el trabajo que le che, las ganas que le che, to make some things possible or even just, I don't know, it could be the smallest thing. But yeah, it just, it really does get to me a lot easier now. But the biggest thing that has helped me is just to really not take it that deep. And that's something that I've recently just started to like repeat to myself and try to continue to teach myself to do. A lot of people were, would always tell me not make a big deal out of it in my head. And I think that's helped me out. Just kind of like chillax, relax, and not take it so far up my nalgas. And it's definitely helped me just like stay more zen and calm down and also um not making social media my whole life and don't take that the wrong way like i still love doing this and i enjoy doing it which is why i'm doing it but i think when i was really getting into my head about it like i feel like social media was my entire life and it still takes a huge fucking portion of my life um but i want to say like i've learned to have fun outside of social media and that was really hard for me to do you guys because Again, I started this in 2015. Um, social media was my hobby. Like, as fucking dumb as that sounds for some people, but, like, I didn't start doing videos and stuff because, like, of the money or where I thought I was going to go or because I wanted to be this big-ass, like, influencer, whatever the fuck you want to call me. I started it because filming videos and editing was a hobby of mine. And I went to school and I went to college for editing videos and I wanted to be in the film industry and cinematography and all this shit so it really was a hobby of mine and just thanks to you guys it turned into a job and something that I can do for fun now but um yeah just trying to pull myself back to reality and like enjoying the moments with my family enjoying things like my house or my dogs or um special people in my life and friends 
has really helped me. I don't think I have a tactic as in like how to block out hate comments. It's just learning to put my phone down when it's too much and it's getting too crazy and doing something for me. Whatever that may be, just put the phone down and let's go. And it's crazy. Like maybe I just needed to practice more. Maybe it's just me or let me know if it's y'all too. But I feel like once I put my phone down and I really just like like leave it the fuck down it's crazy how like your phone and social media is two separate worlds from like your real world and not so much like who i am as a person i mean like when it comes to hate i can walk around and be perfectly fine nobody's saying the shit that they're telling me online nothing like that like it's just very much people grow a lot of pelotas online and they make it seem like the world is falling on you but then you come back to reality and you're like I'm fine. And I think that's something that I really have to learn because I would go crazy when um, my phone was just getting hate for whatever it may be. But yeah, so I definitely suggest like if you're going through something, whatever that may be online or with family or friends or just anyone in your life who's just doing something, just take a breather and just really think about if it's really that serious and that deep to you and then just do something for yourself. I think that's really helped me a lot. Ooh, it's another good one. It's a good follow-up. This says, what was it like going from the... Wait, wait. What was it like going from being bullied to the baddest bear? I'm gonna need a little bite for this one. Mm -hmm. um, definitely a mind fuck. And I'm gonna share it with y'all in hopes that it sparks something and it just helps you do whatever you want to do. Um, I think about that a lot. I think about it so much how... I was bullied straight up even before I started like preschool. Like I have a lot of traumatic experiences from me growing up that I never talked about. Maybe one day I'll be more comfortable to talk about, but traumatic experiences definitely do leave a mark in your brain. And it's crazy how like, even if you were as little as like little, 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 something traumatic like that can always just scar you mentally. And um, yeah, I have a lot of traumatic experiences from when I was really young and it's crazy how I'm just so proud of myself and I think it's safe to say that because I can't believe that like after all of that bullshit that I went through in school and like growing up and everything like I still managed to do what I wanted to do and that's insane and thanks to that I found you guys. So it really becomes just taking negatives and turning it into something positive and um just becoming a stronger better version of yourself i feel like that's what i got out of that so i do think about that a lot and i'm like damn like all those people in especially high school that would make fun of me and laugh at me for even just doing social media and shit now i'm like if i would have let them like get to me like i would not be here like it's just my whole life has turned into like what i dreamed of when i was little and it was a dream bitch like a dream i wasn't sure if it was ever going to become a reality but yeah, it's crazy to think about some of that shit. So if you're going through something in school or at home or with just anybody, just know that it gets better and don't let that shit like dim your light and definitely keep pushing forward. And just as long as you believe in yourself, bitch, I know that sounds so cheesy, but as long as you truly believe in yourself and you keep pushing forward to what you want to do, like it's crazy how our minds will make our dreams a reality and i mean our minds because our minds are very powerful and if you're very determined to do something that it will happen <laughs> but damn i'm becoming a fucking preacher right now and shit how is your love life going <laughs> any tea um my love life is going pretty well and i'm very happy to say that because um, I definitely didn't think I would be dating this year or not even dating, just where I'm at right now. Like, I, I don't know. I just felt like I wasn't going to be mentally ready for anything like that anytime soon, but it's going really well. Um, I'm really happy and that's really crazy to say out loud, but I'm sure, um, I don't know. I've gotten a lot of messages from you guys too that just say that I look very happy and that Y'all can see a different kind of glow. <laughs> I'm all pregnant. <laughs> no, but. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Ooh, who was the person you most admire and why? Hmm. My parents, without a doubt. Um, I admire my parents, and I'm sure a lot of y'all can relate, um, especially like Mexicanos or Latinos. Like, we have a very hardworking parents and I admire that a lot for my parents like like even without me asking them for help or anything like they never fail to help me and my parents are uh, like I think everything that my parents have in life has been because of the people that they are my parents are very kind they're very helpful they're very just I don't know my parents are very sweet people that I feel like even if they weren't my parents I think I would think the same things yeah and also their love life like my parents love romance marriage is very inspiring and i admire it a lot and i hope that one day i could have the same because sometimes it's it's really hard to still believe in love especially with a lot of shit that's going on now in life and then just um in general i think my parents keep my hopes of love like up there and you know like a marriage and finding the one and being with them forever y'all i'm telling you, you guys came up with some good ass questions that really have me shook like i feel like you guys have never really given me like deep ass questions like this so this is a good one y'all did that that was the last bio but all right this one says do you feel therapy has truly changed your outlook on life yes a hundred percent um i don't know if i really talked about me going to therapy here on youtube but definitely on my podcast with yoatsi pretty not smart our podcast um, we've talked about it a lot and I think a lot of people they just associate going to therapy as like a bad thing or that you're like doing bad in life or something but um for a while I remember like I knew I wanted to like go to therapy but I just didn't know where to look or like how to seek somebody or anything like that but eventually I took the step and I did it found an amazing 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 therapist and it's very important for you to find a therapist who um you feel comfortable with because I've told my therapist things that I've never told anybody else and I mean just in general I'm already like a very like cerrado person when it comes to my feelings so having somebody that can fully open up to and not feel like they're being biased with me just telling me what I need to hear it's been very fucking amazing yeah so since I started therapy I feel like I've definitely had a really positive change with the way that I look at life so to give you all a little bit more insight the type of therapy that I do is called EMDR there's so many different kinds of therapy and I didn't want to do like a therapy where I could just talk and vent to someone I mean I definitely still do that now but I think EMDR that specific kind of therapy has helped me so much um, with a lot of things in my past like I said I have a lot of traumatic experiences in my past and it's made me see that all in a different like way and like um, help me realize certain things in my life and just kind of I don't know have a more clear mind it's helped me a lot with my anxiety it's helped me a lot with how I see life and how I go about my everyday decisions it's helped me set boundaries with people it's helped me it's just such a positive great thing and to think that I was like should I do therapy like do I need therapy like blah, blah. like just to think that I was like hesitant about it and now it's like such an amazing huge part of my life and having just somebody that I can full on vent to and talk to and also do like my EMDR with and stuff is amazing like I look forward to going to therapy even though sometimes I do get a little nervous about what we're gonna talk about but yeah um so if anyone out there is thinking about doing therapy or just even giving it a try I highly suggest it and that's coming from somebody like me who does not open up about their feelings definitely very positive okay this next one says throw some tea about a teacher from school Ooh. Who do I want to throw under the bus? Well, for sure, um, my high school principal, who was just a fucking dick. I hated my high school principal at the time. Hated him because the way he handled my situation when it came to bullying in high school, he just straight up didn't care because my bullies were like his homies. They were very much like ass kissers. And he was very much like, hey, hey those are my homie, blah, blah, blah. Like, it took a lot for me in high school to go um, report on my bullies because, you know, in high school, like, that shit's looked as, like, lame. Like, who's gonna go snitch, like, blah, blah, And, like, but it had really gotten to the point where, like, I couldn't. I wanted to leave and transfer schools. And I was 
super sad. My mom would come pick me up for lunch every single day. I'm not kidding. And I would just have lunch in her car and people would laugh at me and like, it was just really bad. And I remember it got to the point where like, I was crying. I was always at home depressed and sad and like just overthinking everything that I was doing. And my mom noticed that and I finally went to the principal and um, I tried telling the principal like, hey, like these people are constantly bullying me. They're constantly making fun of me. They're constantly throwing things at me. They're constantly making it seem like they want to fight me and just doing the most. I was literally scared every time I'd have to go to school. Like I was scared. My, one of my friends, my really close friends at the time would have to walk me to class. Like, can you imagine as like a high schooler being walked to class and your mom picking you up for lunch? Like you're not a chamaco anymore in high school. Like you're a teenager and for all of that and for being that scared like that just shows and y'all know me now i'll put up a bun real motherfucking quick but like imagine how scared i was at the time so um i finally took it to go tell the principal and um when i was telling the principal he was just like very confused and seemed like okay like you're telling me this because and keep in mind y'all we had like yearly maybe twice a year uh like bully um what were they called speeches or like in the auditorium and shit like that presentations and to make it and make Make your students feel that they're in a safe place and can come, you know, tell you when something's going on. And when they do, you're just kind of like, oh, hey, what do you want me to do about it? And when he asked me who my bullies are, I gave him their names. And he goes, no, they can't be your bullies. There's no way. And I was like, yeah. So he's like, all right, let me call them up. And I was like, what? What do you mean you're going to call up my bullies? Like me going to, like, I thought he was going to like, Call them separately and just like, hey, like, leave them alone. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. I was just like, I need to report now. And he's like, let me call him real quick. Like, I'll be in freaking chill. Like, he was about to call his homegirl and we were going to have, like, coffee and shit. So, he calls them all out of class. Bitch. As soon as they walk in, hey, buddy, how are you guys doing? Hey, come here. Hey, how are you? Hey, how have you been? Girl, you're still like, hella, like, homies, platica. Like, they had a full conversation as I'm sitting in the chair crying. Because I was crying like this. They all go like behind the principal's desk with the principal and they're all just staring at me like <clears throat> like you're really called like tried fucking reporting us to the principal like this is how dumb you look like we're friends with the principal and I should have known because these you know the bullies are always like friends with the teachers and they're always like the ass kissers and um yeah I felt like a dumbass like biggest slap to the face and as they're there he's like so what 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 were they doing to you like girl you cannot tell me he was trying to comfort me or trying to make things better he literally was wanting me to tell him what happened in front and as i was crying like i tell him like they don't leave me alone like blah blah, blah. and like it's all because i was doing social media at the time as well so a big part of the reason why they would like bully me is because i was doing social media like at the time it's not like now you guys it's not like you're gonna go on your for you page you're gonna see someone from your school like doing a little tiktok dance like no when I was doing this shit, shit was weird as Like if you were doing that, you're like not okay. Like you're a loser, like it's unpopular, like it will cringe. That's how it was when I was doing social media in high school. When I explained to him that I was trying to like do videos and that they were making fun of me and playing them in class and like making all this stupid shit out of my videos. He was like, well then why are you doing social media? And I was like, well, because it's fun to me. And he's like, well, if you can't handle that, then just delete it. And I was like, <sighs> and I was already gagged that he told me that because I was like, did you not hear that it's something that I'm having fun with and they just can't respect my privacy or like, not even my privacy, but like my hobby. And then I just kind of like stayed there like with my mouth open because instead of coming up with a solution or been like, hey, y'all, like even if he thought it was dumb, like, hey, y'all just leave him alone. Like, let him do whatever he wants to do. Yeah, se acabo, se acabo. After he tells me that, he's like, like, why are you even doing that? Like, are you trying to be famous or something? Like, are you trying to become someone in life? And like that, con esa cara, like just like, oof. And, oh my God, I just remember getting so sad and like frustrated and like, especially coming from an adult, like crushing your dreams like that and being like, Ugh. like at, literally at the time, it's not even that I wanted to become like an influencer and like a content creator. No, I was just doing it because it was fun and I was literally taking an, a filming class in school. So it was like an outlet for my creativity. Yeah, it was just like another creative outlet for me, but yeah, that freaking sucked. And um, the principal didn't do anything about it. They never stopped bullying me. They just made more fun of me. And so I fucking hated him and yeah, he's a fucking stupid ass and I hope he sees this. And I hope he also sees this big ass house and my nice ass cars and all my perras who follow me and everywhere I am right now. And I'll send him one of my pallets. <laughs>
<laughs> oh yeah, you guys, but that shit was crazy. Mm. Advice you could give that helped you during your healing journey. Uh, I'm assuming that with like relationships and like breakups um number one thing i will always say to people is surround yourself with friends and family i know at the time you feel super sad and you don't want to see anybody but it's okay to take days to yourself where you just want to be alone and you know vent your feelings out and cry especially if you're not somebody who's like comfortable sharing your feelings and push yourself to um be with your friends and family and also try to make new friends that really helped me when i was healing because you guys have to realize this or maybe i'm the only dumbass who didn't realize this but like a relationship is not just like with a significant other. A relationship is also with friends, family, your pets. Like, a relationship. Those are all, like, sources of love. And I think when I was really going through, like, my breakup, I focused on those relationships. The relationships with my friends, the relationships with my family. And it sucks, and it sucks to admit, but, like, when I was in a relationship, I kind of wasn't giving my all to my friends and family. So getting out of a relationship and then finding my love with all of my friends and family really helped remind me of the importance of friends and family so now like no matter what my friends and family are the top priority of my list um because i see them now as a relationship and it really is a relationship because that's a source of love that you're getting from somebody that you like spending time with it doesn't have to be like an intimate relationship but yeah so making new friends surrounding yourself with also your friends and family and also not being afraid of alone time you guys the one thing that helped me the most was learning to be alone and romanticizing alone time i know that sounds a little crazy but like if you're going through a breakup right now stop seeing it as like fuck i'm so lonely but try to romanticize your alone time and i know it might sound cringy right now but i started to romanticize my alone time and it helped me just see see it in a whole different way like if i was at the grocery store and i saw flowers i would buy myself flowers and all right i'm all fucking sad no no no. but i would buy myself flowers and just seeing them in my house would make me happy like it was just a burst of color i would choose whatever color i wanted and what was making me happy at the moment um i would go get food by myself i would go to like little coffee shops and shit like that just to like sit there although it felt really awkward at the time but even if it was just me on my phone like that felt really nice walking my dogs finding new parks. Um, sometimes I would literally even just drive around the block or somewhere and just play Lara's music because I just felt like doing it. Yeah, little things like literally just will just help you a lot. And yeah, I hope that helps you, especially if you struggle like with being alone. I think that would be a really great thing to do because now I love being alone and I would never think that that would be something I would enjoy doing because I freaking hated being alone before. Now I love it. Okay, I think this is the last one. And I think it's the perfect one to finish up the video. It says, what are you looking forward to in 2024? Mm -hmm. I know this is going to sound kind of dumb because I just ate a whole freaking bowl of spicy ass noodles and like webbles and all these sauces and shit. But I'm really looking forward to taking my um, health and fitness journey a lot more serious. Um, I know a lot of people come into the year like gym girly, like blah blah. And you know what? Fuck that. People are telling you shit. Who cares? If that's a goal you have for yourself, start it off strong. And I definitely am gonna add that to like my 2024. I've already um, been working on it and I'm very, very, very happy with my results so far. And hopefully soon I feel comfortable enough to show y'all some pictures because yeah, I have some pictures of like my health and fitness journey but i'm still trying to get there and feel better about it but hey as long as i feel proud of myself all that matters right all right but i'm really looking forward to taking that more serious um i'm looking forward to my love life in 2024 i also have this goal of mine for 2024 to um continue to discover myself um i hate to say this but part of me feels like i've been stuck in the same place for the last few years now and i can feel something inside of me all right it's a pedal no i feel something inside of me just trying to like rip out of that like shell like i literally feel something just like <laughs> But it's hard because I don't know what it is that I need to do to like break out of that shell. But I have this very, very strong feeling inside of me that just wants, that's ready for change, wants something new. And I really think, because I used to think it was like my environment or where I was in life. But like I've, I've changed so many things, but I think the one thing that hasn't really changed is like me as a person. I'm really looking forward to just kind of discovering myself, um, maybe finding new hobbies and trying to see where life takes me in 2024 um all right i'm all fucking like 
reading my fortune. No, but I really do. And I don't know what that means and where it's going to take me, but I'm excited for a new version of myself. And I don't think I've been excited for change this much. I don't really like change, but I'm really, really looking forward to change. Wow, you guys, you guys asked me some really good questions. Um, like I said, I asked you guys on my Perras Only group chat. So if you want to join that, just go to my Instagram. You'll see it on my bio. It's called like a channel. I'm not sure if you guys have joined other channels, but I keep up with you Perras a lot in there. Yeah, thank you for some good ass questions. I feel like y'all went deep. I was expecting this to be more of like a crazy little funny cheese my video, but I feel like y'all wanted some real life shit. And maybe that's just because I haven't really been so open with y'all. Yeah, thank you guys for some amazing questions, and I hope you guys are enjoying Vlogmas. It's been very hard, I'm not gonna lie to y'all, <laughs> but I have been enjoying it a lot, and I love seeing my little community back on YouTube continuing to grow because I did take forever to upload again on YouTube. But once again, thank you guys so much for watching another Vlogmas video, and I'm excited for y'all to see the upcoming Christmas Vlogmas videos that I have coming up. But I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Bye, guys! Carvel and a